Hey, what's up guys? It's Franchise923, and in this video I wanted to take a look at a question that one of our viewers had. So, Diana Ramirez here says that they have a file with temperatures and coordinates from weather stations at 10 minute intervals. I need to make a layer from every time interval from set weather stations. Okay, so they've provided us a file here, so let's take a look at it. It's a Excel spreadsheet. So this is cool. We can work with this. Um, the next question is we need to check to see if it actually has geospatial data in it. So it does. So that means we can basically plot it on the map. So we have these latitude and longitude columns. Um, so that's good. Um, the only thing, the only other thing I'm going to do is actually save this as a CSV file. So if I open with Google Sheets, uh, we should be able to say basically save it or download it as a CSV file. And I have a feeling that we might not be able to work with Excel files in QGIS. So um, I just went ahead and made it the CSV. So let's open this up. And the first thing we're going to do is how, how do we um, use this CSV file? How, how can we plot it on a map? So you'll notice if I just drag the CSV file in, it's not showing up on the map. And that's because it doesn't know what to do with this data. It doesn't know where... Um, to plot the data. So I'm just going to remove this. And what we have to do is we have to add a layer and add delimited text layer. So delimited text basically just means it, it's text that's separated by something. It doesn't have to be a comma, but um, our CSV is a comma delimited t uh, text file. So just um, browse to where you downloaded that CSV file. And you can see here it's all like automatically populating some information. So the, it knows the geometry of it, point coordinates. It knows that the X and Y fields, it's going to be longitude, latitude. So it, it did this automatically. Um, it identified that we have these fields and it basically mapped it to the X and Y. So that's good. Um, and then the only other thing to be aware of is make sure you, you pick a coordinate system here if it doesn't automatically populate. Um, so this is just a little preview of what it's going to look like. That looks good, so just click Add and close this. So cool, you see we have points on the map now. Uh, let's actually add a base map and then change the order here. And let me make these points like different color. That's cool. Nice, all right. So let's take a look at this data now. All right, so you can see here we have weather stations and then times, temperatures, lat long, and altitude. So um, the viewer or Diana was interested in basically making separate layers for each time interval. So these are all weather stations and every 10 minutes they're recording data. So we wanna be able to see, we wanna separate out all these layers. Um, so how do we do that? So th what I'm gonna do is Let's go to select features using an expression and then go to fields and values and then date time. All right, so date time and then say equals. And if you say all unique here, it's gonna find all the unique date time values. So you can see there's seven o'clock, 710, 720, 730, 40, so each 10 minutes. So let's say we're interested in just viewing. We wanna make a new layer based on all the seven o'clock readings from all the weather stations. So just double click that and click select features. All right, it says seven matching features selected. So I'm gonna close this for now. And if I go down here and say, don't show all features, but show selected features. So these are all the, um, basically all the data that happened at seven o'clock. So you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different weather stations. And this is the readings that they got at seven o'clock or 1900. Um, so cool, so that's what we wanted to do. So let's just um, make a new layer based on this. So if we say export and you can say save selected features as, I'm gonna save it as a shape file and I'm just gonna put it here and call it um, 700 or seven o'clock, actually let's call it 1900. It makes more sense. All right, 
and this is all good so just click OK and now it's added and I'm gonna turn off the main layer and now you can see this is just representing 1900 so let's make that green that's green let's just do the same thing with a different time so if I go to the attribute table where'd that go here it is I'm going to clear my selection and basically make another selection so same thing fields and values date time all unique and now let's do 1910 so 10 minutes later oh I forgot the equals I always do that date time equals 1910 should be seven there should be seven results again seven matching features found cool um, show selected features they're all 710 or 1910 and let's just go ahead and do the same thing so close this export save selected features as and I'm just gonna make it 19 10 and save it and turn this one off so here's 19 uh, this is 1900 and then 1910s on top of it and how do we I'm trying to figure out how we get the information I basically want to see the actual temperature all right so that's so this was at 1900 it was 22.8 degrees at 1910 is that no it's still 1900 1910 22.5 so it actually went down there huh Twenty two point five at nineteen ten. Wait a second, I'm not selecting the right thing. Nineteen ten. Twenty two point five. Nineteen hundred. Let's see here. Why is it only select? Oh, let me see here. Top down. Let's try that. There we go. All right. 22.5. Yeah, so it was actually warmer at 7 or 1900 than it was. Interesting. All right. Um, but yeah, that's what I wanted to show you how to do. Um, hopefully that was helpful. It, it, it's definitely a useful thing to know how to do. Um, all right. If you like this, uh, please like and subscribe. And if you have any other uh, questions or you want to see any other videos, please let me know. Thanks.